Hi, I'm Dr. Chen Xiao, a radiation oncologist in Taipei VGH. I'm honored to be invited to give an online talk about carbon ion therapy and its applications in sarcomas. This is the outline of my talk. I have no conflict of interest to be declared. Taipei VGH is located in the northern Beitou district of Taipei. The main building is 23 floors tall, heavy ion therapy center, is over here among the buildings of ambulatory clinic. The heart of HITC is a 20 meter uh, diameter synchrotron that could accelerate carbon ion to up to a maximum energy of 430 MeV per nucleon and a maximum depth of 30 centimeter. In order to provide vertical beam, the beam line has to be bended and directly up to a four-story high before shooting back to the treatment room. The top two photos are the HITC buildings. The lower left is the lobby and the lower right is the treatment area in B1. Each treatment rooms have one vertical port and one horizontal port. We have just completed a six cases clinical trial to verify the safety of carbon ion therapy in our institute. Carbon ion therapy will become a clinical practice at Taipei VGH in second or third quarter next year. Taiwan has become the particle therapy island. We now have three proton centers, one carbon ion centers in operations, and three proton centers under constructions. Why are Taiwan's health institutes so enthusiastic about particle therapy? Conventional radiation therapy is mega voltage photon or electrons. The most common type of particle therapy are neutrons, protons, and carbon ions. Protons or neutrons radiation therapy has high entry dose and low but considerable exit dose. Charged particle therapy with breakbeat phenomena, on the other hand, have low entry dose and almost zero exit dose. Proton or carbon ion therapy have zero dose to the lung and heart, in this case of paraspinal sarcoma. The integral radiation dose to the surrounding normal tissues are much decreased with particle therapy for this lung cancer. In this skull-based codoma, the radiation dose to the brain is much decreased with carbon ion therapy. In this sacral codoma, the anterior bar and bladder receive zero dose from carbon ion therapy, and patients will be spared from acute and late GI toxicities that are commonly seen with IMRT. Both protons and carbon ions have break peaks. Then why type A VGH chooses carbon ions? Carbon ions have both physical and biological advantages over protons. The carbon ions on the upper right corner in this graph has the highest radiobiological effect comparable to neutrons on the x-axis. And best physical dose distributions as proton on the y-axis. With spread outbreak peak adjusted to the tumor depth and size, carbon ion therapy has lower entry plateau dose and slightly more but negligible exit tail dose compared to protons. With atomic weights 12 times of protons, carbon ion therapy has a sharper lateral penumbra dose distributions. In this demo case of skull-based codoma, the dose to the brain stain is clearly much lower in the right side carbon ion therapy. With sparse ionization tracks, protons and photons kill tumor cells by accumulation of sublethal single strain break of DNA from indirect actions of free radicals. With dense ionization track, the carbon ion therapy effectively kill tumor cells with via direct lethal double strain break of DNA. RBE is defined as the ratio of absorptive dose of two radiation required to produce the same biological effect. Relative to mega voltage X-ray, the RBE of proton is around 1.1 to 1.2. 
Abi of carbon ions is higher around 2 to 3. The increased radio response in the presence of oxygen is known as the oxygen enhancement ratio, calculated by the dose in hypoxia divided by the dose in the air to achieve the same survival level. The OER of X-ray and protons is similar, about 2.5 to 3. OER of carbon is only 1.5. The RB of carbon ions further increases to 4 to 4.5 in hypoxic state. In summary, carbon ion is better than proton with a sharper lateral dose distributions, lower entry dose, higher RBE, and lower OER. Let's review reported clinical data about sarcoma treated by carbon ions therapy. Dr. Tsuji reviewed 18 years of clinical experience of carbon ion therapy at NIRS in Japan. The five-year overall survival of osteosarcoma of the trunk is 32%, comparable to the surgical results in the literature. The five-year local control rate 88% and overall survival rate 86% of sacral codoma is better than the surgical results of Mayo Clinic. The five-year local control rate and overall survival of skull-based C-spine codoma around 80% are better than the data of proton therapy. In the Huck reviews of skull-based codoma, the five-year local control rate about 75% and five-year overall survival around 85% by carbon ion therapy are equal to or slightly better than that of proton therapy. Let's see some codoma cases from the literatures. This kyvus codoma is well controlled at 67 months after carbon ion therapy. Market tumor regressions were seen in these three cases of sacral codomas at four years after carbon ion therapy. In the experience of MGH in regard to codoma response to RT, post-RT transient tumor swelling is seen in some of the codoma cases. Codoma in general will gradually shrink over the time. Dr. Imai reviewed 188 cases of sacral codoma treated by carbon ions at NIRS from 1996 to 2013. Optimal dose surgeons were studied by gradual dose escalations. The optimal carbon ion dose for sacral codomas was set at 67.2 gray RBE in 16 fractions because 15% of patients receiving 70.4 gray RBE had grade 2 to 3 neurological adverse events. The 5-year overall survival rate, local control rate, and DFS are 81%, 77%, and 50% respectively. The 5-year distant metastasis rate was 32%. Three patients has grade 3 to 4 skin toxicities, and six patients had grade 3 radiculopathy. Dr. Demizu retrospectively reviewed 219 cases of sacrocodoma treated by carbon ion therapy at multiple centers in Japan. The five year overall survival rate, local control rate, and DFS are 84%, 72%, and 48%, respectively. He found age and tumor volumes are independent prognostic factors for overall survival. Dr. Bostel reviewed 68 patients of primary or recurrent sacral codomas treated by carbon ions at Heidelberg University. There were 52 primary cases and 16 ca recurrent cases. 28 cases were treated by carbon ion alone and 26 cases after R2 resections, and 16 cases after R0 or R1 resections. The local control rate was not as good as Japanese series. The five-year local control rate was only 62% in the primary cases and 27% in the recurrent cases. Age is a prognostic factor for overall survival. In addition, tumor volume was found to be a prognostic factor for overall survival.
The skin, GI, and peripheral nerves toxicities were low and similar to Japanese series. However, 11 patients had sacral insufficient fractures. The inconsistent outcomes of carbon ion therapy for sacral codoma treated at Heidelberg and Japanese series could be partially explained by differences in primary or recurrent status, definitive or post-operative CIT, CIT alone or combined with IMRT. The differences in those prescriptions could also be a factor. Make comparison more complicated is that the biophysical model to estimate RBE dose in Japan and German series are different. The 64 gray RBE in 16 fractions in NIR's MK model is actually higher than the Heidelberg LEM model. Mayo Clinic and NIR's QST jointly compared the outcomes of sacral codoma treated by carbon therapy versus M block resection cohort and 10 NCDB cohorts. By propensity score matching, there was no difference in survival and PFS between carbon ion therapy and M block resections. The overall survival by carbon ion therapy alone is significantly better than the cohort of primary RT and cohort of positive resection margin without post operative RT. The survival after proton therapy is comparable to carbon ion therapies, however. Dr. Imai reported the outcome of unresectable axial soft tissue sarcoma treated by carbon ion therapy and NIRS. The 128 cases series consists of various tumor histologies. The five-year local control rate, overall survival, and DFS are 65%, 46%, and 39% respectively. Dr. Musha reported a 10 case series of inoperable hand and neck sarcomas treated by carbon ion therapy at Gumba University. The three year local control, overall survival, and progression free survival rates were 73%, 78%, and 36%, respectively. This case of large UPS of Pterygo parting fossas was well under control at three years after carbon ion therapy. Tumor volume was also found to be a prognostic factor in this small series. Dr. Serizawa reviewed cases with unresectable retroperineal sarcoma treated by CIT at NIRS. The five year local control rate was around 69%. The risk of grade 2 or more neurotoxicity was about 21% in this series. Good control of retroperitoneal cases is 56 months after CIT. The tumor response of three different cases of retroperitoneal sarcoma to CIT was very all very good. NIRS also reported long-term tumor control and survival of three cases of sacral osteosarcoma treated by carbon ion therapy alone. Osteosarcoma of the trunk still under control at 13 years after CIT. Two pelvic osteosarcoma treated by carbon ion at Guma University were under control at five and seven years. The five-year overall survival rate and local control rate of unresectable osteosarcoma of the trunk treated by carbon ion alone are 33% and 62% respectively. Again, tumor volume is the prognostic factor. Take-home messages. There is no single best radiation technique to deal with all clinical scenarios. Carbon ion therapy is currently not applicable in the post-operative setting to treat subclinical microscopy residual disease. Carbon ion is theoretically the modality of choice for radio resistant tumors such as codoma and unresectable osteosarcoma. Tumors with large hypoxia fractions, hypofractionating radiotherapy and or radio surgeries. This has wrapped up my talk. If you've had any questions in regard to type A VGH heavy ion therapy centers, please feel free to contact me with the email listed above. Thank you.